Hello, everybody. So, welcome to another week. You know, we got all five of us here today for Fun Time Sunday this week since Mitchell did not join us last week since he had work. But today we're not doing anything special. We're just going to be doing a piece analysis of two pieces. Uh, Gustav Holst planets uh, specifically. We're going to be looking at Jupiter and Mars. So we're going to do our coin flips like usual. And I shouldn't need to talk about the ensemble. You know, go to the Instagram, go get that information. But Jalen, which one would you want, Mars or Jupiter? Jupiter. Okay, so now which heads or tails with the Boston coin? Yes. Tails? Okay. Tails, Jupiter, yes. heads, Mars. You're doing Mars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but the the coin is spoken. Uh, Mitchell, we'll, we'll go with you now. Mitchell, what do you want? What do you want, Mitchell? Which Jupiter? You going Jupiter? Which which side? Heads. Heads. You got Jupiter, bud. The coin's in your yes, favor. Server. The coin was in your favor. Okay, Owen, you. Um, I'll take Mars on heads. Okay, Mars on heads. You're doing Mars. So we got two Mars is one two Mars, one Jupiter. Isaac, what about you? What do you want? I would like Jupiter for three hundred, please. <laughs> oh sorry, heads. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, you're doing Jupiter. So, two Jupiter, two Mars. Yes. In the call, it's really weird. I have Isaac and Mitchell on one side for Jupiter, and then Jalen and Owen on the other for Mars. Yeah, let's go. Wait, wait. Yeah, right? That's that's right. Or am I wrong? Oh, and you had Mars, right? Or Jupiter? Yes, I did get Mars. Okay, okay. So, me. Uh, I'll say Jupiter for heads. I have Jupiter. Okay, so three of us will be doing Jupiter, and then the other two, Owen and Jalen, will be doing Mars. So, you know, we'll go into the calls, uh, not the calls, we'll go to the tapes, and uh, it'll go me, Mitchell, then Isaac for Jupiter, then Owen, and then Jalen for uh, Mars. Okay, we'll see you after the tapes. Okay, everybody, so I'm Gavin. I'll be looking at Gustav Holst, the planet's Jupiter, the bringer of jollity. I think jollity, something like that. I I can't do English. So um, this is one of my favorite pieces, actually. I love listening to any of the planets, especially Gustav Holst's version of them. And I know, like, people have added, like, a, a Earth and, like, a moon, I think they have added that. But those aren't a part of the original. So... Uh, let's get into it. Uh, it's 7 minutes and 35 seconds long, so here we go. I've always loved this beginning just with strings and the horns. Dun, 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 dun. Such a powerful boom. It just brings you with joy. I've always called it, like, bringer of joy. And that probably is might what it means, because I get a lot of joy while listening to this piece. Tons of joy. Just so joyful and bouncy. And it's all about the horns. Like this and Mars are just all about the brass and horns. Horns is actually a horns. A they're so powerful. Great instrument. I get to you know I play that instrument, so I've always loved it. But for Mars, it's a fun fact I was mentioned later in the podcast that I, I believe John Williams got some of his inspired music from Mars. Like. Mars inspired him for some of the Star Wars music since it sounds very similar. Horns. Bum, 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 bum. Such a great melody. With the low brass in the back with the strings. Yep. Bum, bum, bum. The percussion with the like blocking spiel, I think it's called. It's that whole section, just a great melody. I love the ballad in this piece, such a great, well, not the ballad, like the slower section, I was trying to say, it's not like a marching show. Like, cadets perform this so, like, a lot, and I think Cavaliers have before, too. My friend, uh, Jacob and I would always play this on horn, and then we would never be able to do the second part, because it's a very difficult part, this part. It's very difficult. Horns, 
majestic in the background, and the trumpets take over. Nice. Love the blend of this ensemble. I wish the video told me which ensemble it was, but a great ensemble playing it. My favorite video of it. I love this, like, the consistent 3-4 going. The low brass takeover, it's all the trumpets, with the horns. Just a great ending to that section. Love it. Nice blend of sounds, all, like, so many layers, but it all works very well. To bring the mysterious amount of joy that you guys feel when you listen to it. And the woodwinds. And here comes the ballad with the horns. Such a beautiful ballad. Horns and strings. Such a great... It warms me up. I get chills anytime I listen to it. I'm getting them right now. Such a full sound, and it's such a great piece to listen to. sitting on top, just like the Shostakovich piece, uh, a lot of Shostakovich pieces, pieces do, a lot of just strings sitting on top, but it sounds awesome, and the brass take over all the time, bum, bum, bum. nice, bum, 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 bum. Just the bassoons in the back, you can hear them. That's how you know you have a great blend when you can hear all the voices. Back with that other motif with like the feel of like 3A, but it's 3-4, I'm pretty sure. Back with that motif, we're bringing back all the melodies in the back and throughout the piece. Bum, 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 bum. Nice. I've watched this whole symphony live before. Such a great symphony to listen to live, especially from a great uh, ensemble I listened to. I think it was Florida. Uh, I don't know, 
was a sort of symphonic ensemble. Uh, I think they fought an orchestra, I'm pretty sure. the end. Yes. Then it ends. Then it goes on to the next piece, technically, the next movement. I'm pretty sure the next movement... I can probably search it up real quick. Uh, Planets Symphony. Uh, no, I don't need to hear another one of Jupiter, even though it's a great piece. Planets Symphony... Yeah, but overall, I always, I've always loved listening to it. It's such a great piece to listen to. Yeah, it has like Mercury, Venus, the planets, planet suite. Let me see. Uh, yeah, it has Mercury, Venus, Mars, then Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. That's the only planets it has. So yeah, people added like a sun. The ERA Earth. is oh. not about to. Well, has added like the sun, the, uh, you know, uh, the moon, Pluto, and Earth added a bunch of those and it was pretty cool but they just never were added into the original i'm pretty sure he planned to compose those but yeah that's my uh take on jupiter so uh hand you off to i think i said mitchell and then isaac but we'll see see you after the judge tapes hello everyone so today we are going to be uh watching the um or listening to the uh symphony gustav holtz uh by gustav holtz the planets um the jupiter movement so Let's get right into this. Really strong, confident brass. Confident brass entrance there. And then little brass, good job of restating the uh, main melody. Really consistent brass playing. Very strong, again, consistent, really well done. I can hear the horns in there. Powerful, confident playing. Really strong. Nice double tonguing. Really nice woodwind playing too. And then there are the strings um, coming in.
Kind of sounds almost triumphant. Really triumphant playing. Um, really like this. I really, personally, I haven't really listened to uh, the planets really all that much, so this is kind of like my first go around with this, but it's really cool. Really cool sounding piece. And it drops out and has a couple little woodwind and little string parts here while we're waiting for the brass to come back in. Just the piccolo, it seems like. They're doing a really good job um, with dynamics. Really awesome job by the horns. Trumpet. Then it pulls back tempo into somewhat of a, uh, like a procession kind of. I like how the woodwinds are just able to just lightly dot the notes and then just get right back off of them. I like how the horns and the brass comes in on that. I like this, this is a really cool part. Nice strong low low uh, instrument part. Really cool woman part. And then last little statement of a melody. Alright. So that was that was pretty cool. I really enjoyed that. So without further ado, let's take it back to the other house, see what they say. Hey everyone, it's Isaac for the Fun Time Sunday. So today we're listening to the planet and I am on Jupiter. And I'm gonna be using the recording of the London Symphony Orchestra. So let's get right into this.
one of my favorite, favorite uh, parts of this, uh, this symphony is actually in the middle. Really amazing parts in this piece, absolutely love this piece. So obviously you have that motif being passed around, um, starts with trumpet, goes to, I believe, violins, violas, and then switches to woodwinds. It's extremely hard for uh, the strings and the woodwinds and the brass to have the same exact articulation style and make sure the notes are the same exact length all the way through. Then the flutes come in. Flutes take over the melody there with the clarinet and the piccolo and the oboe. I love the delicacy of this next part coming up. Then the flutes come back in. Let me go into that one feel. Da, 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 da. It's really relaxed and just, you know, really stretched out. And then the French horn's coming in on two. Two. And then you have the piccolo and the flutes doing this 16th note, 32nd note run all the way up and down. Really, really beautiful stuff. And then Woodwind's coming in with a little motif here again with 8th note pattern. And then, so you have the melody being passed around all throughout the, uh, all throughout the ensemble. They do a really great job of matching. Beautiful chord. Beautiful job with articulation there. Then we're starting to get mysterious. A little bit of playful. A no playful idea there. Again, really hard to get that articulation going again. This is one of my favorite parts of this piece. So beautiful, gracious, and just, you know, when it gets stretched out in the right way, it just feels great. And they keep driving that energy all the way through. Later you'll hear that one, two, and you'll hear that big boom on two. It's gonna be a really, really great part. Love, absolutely love that part. And driving that energy all the way to one. Love that low brass French horn part here. Three, one. And a beautiful melody by the violins here. The violins. Then all of a sudden it's huge here, really, really big. Then it gets even bigger. You think it's already done, but then it just keeps going. really really soft so that's obviously that part is really hard because you have to keep driving the energy and then you go right in from this huge huge part and then you hit that chord and then you have to back down right away to go to, to what we're in now our, this little playful section
Piccolo part is so much fun to play in this piece. I had the privilege of playing this with the uh, Fidel's Youth Symphony in the past couple of years. So in that flute section in the piccolo there, we're going digga 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 Like we hear right here, we want to make sure you really, you know, you're hitting those, uh, for me, I like the double tongue a lot. So really hitting those double tongues and digga 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 So, for me, I think about being as light as possible and hitting precisely where I want my tongue to hit. Also driving the air when you're double tongue. So obviously we hear the contrast of very, very big and loud to very, very soft and quiet. And I absolutely love how there's always energy to each and every note, even when they're very, very quiet or they're very, very big. Very playful feel here, you know, going back into the one. Beautiful trumpet, just you know, coming over the top of the ensemble, but obviously not overbearing. With all the parts coming in, different parts, you know. And then you got the timpani and the bass drum in the back, just going in. Really, really nice stuff. Then you get really, really fat sound from the low brass and the low, um, low winds, and really. And, you know, the low strings from the cellos and basses here. Then we get really fast here. So, obviously in that piece, it's a very... At the beginning, we go into this kind of huge like fanfare type you know thing um obviously it's about jollity so it's about you know kind of being happy and like all this other stuff so it's really really cool stuff um then the middle section we go into this more ballad type feel it's really long stretched out and you want to hear that one two three one and you hear those really big impactful sounds and obviously it starts really quiet in the beginning and then it gets really really big and you know fat sound and then at the end, you're hearing all these like playful things, and then it comes into this really, really big sound again. And then at the very end, we got this very regal, you know, trumpets and regal low brass, and you have this really big, you know, nice feel. Absolutely love this piece. I love how there's contrast to, you know, how big and small some of these parts are, very quiet, but also being very, very big and loud at times, and also having very, like, you know, nice energy to every single note that they're playing, you know? It can be very soft as And then you can get really big and they still have that energy and they're not losing, you know, their airstream and they're not losing those tonguing so it doesn't get too long and lega like legato. It's very, very short and detached. All right, so let's get back into the call, I guess. My name is Owen Kensky and I will be judging Gustav Holt's The Planets, specifically Mars. Yeah, starting off with that iconic triplet rhythm there. Percussion not coming out too heavily from the melody. Just tasteful enough to be able to distinguish that it's there and it's providing that rhythmic backing over those long tones in the low brass.
good lead into the crescendo there, saving most of the power for the end of it. Good swells with that sforzando kind of feel there. Confident entrances there in the high brass. Everyone joining on that unison triplet rhythm. Good balance of these minor chords here, that aggressive dark tone. Yeah, good layering with the high brass giving that kind of fanfare there over top of the long tones given by the trumpets, or long tones given by the low brass, rather. I feel like that suspended symbol in that moment brought that crescendo a little sooner than it should have been. Kind of taking away from some of the dramatic nature there. High brass joining the snare on that rhythm there. That da 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 da. Very sneakily coming in with that melodic content. Powerful dynamic there, going from a kind of sweeter but still that minor angry feel into that big fanfare, the iconic melodic sound. The percussion and uh, uh, higher voices coming on that rhythmic uh, part, giving the low brass that room to come through with those long tones that like, provide the real melody.
good swells in the timpani. Not overpowering, but just enough to be able to feel that texture in this section. A little heavy on the tam-tam there. Good attack there, unison attacks on those all on those hits there. Yeah, really good, really good control of dynamics throughout that. Um, I really appreciated the the tastefulness of the timpani and the snare not overpowering majority of the band as you hear sometimes in some uh, symphonies and performances. Um, just phenomenal composition on the melodic content, being able to take this twisted minor heavy focus on the low brass and be able to turn that into something very pleasing to the ear. Just a very good composition. Hi, this is Jalen listening to Mars. So really dark, spooky. I really like this beginning. I swear my volume's all the way up. This is just their amazing dynamics and being able to play this well in piano range makes me want to whisper. <laughs> it's, it's so cool. Nice gong hit there. Sometimes it can be a little too overpowering, but it worked really well. It's getting higher and higher and builds up. It's really, it's really nice. Timpani in the back really adds so much. I like the little trumpet accents here. Brings intensity for sure. Chell. Yes. Amazing hit. That is so cool. <laughs> I love the brass here. They come off together really well those little accents okay here it is again switching over from a brass to a woodwind it's super smooth you almost don't even notice it it's so well balanced fluctuating in and out really adds so much creates intensity and an emotion. Good, very in time. These parts can seem like a, almost like a cheat because it's almost like a metronome, but it really adds more of, um, I don't wanna say intensity again, but it does. And it's, it acts as like layering. I really like it. The back and forth is really cool. I was waiting for that, that snare drum to come in. When something is called Mars Bringer of War, you know there's going to be a snare in there. <laughs> mm. 
Wow. Whoa. I so wish I was playing this. That hit would be so emotional and so much fun. Definitely like the snare drum in the back. Fluctuating in and out again. The trumpet and snare are really together. I really like this composition. You get so involved with it, sometimes it's hard to talk. Yes, buzz rolls, bring it up. Wow. Big brass moment here. Man. This is amazing. I. I can imagine this is seriously hard to play and get so smooth, yet so full. Seems to continue transitioning to higher parts, which I think really works well in this piece. The connection between percussion and uh, the woodwinds are really, really well done, along with the brass, of course. I like this little part here. The repetitiveness, I think, adds a lot because this is just building upon itself and creating this intensity and so always even in like literature repetitive repetitiveness <laughs> is really used for this i do really like the forte pianos and then in, here's a chill yes Buzz roll, yes. The gong or tam tam or the, whatever they're using there fits in and it blends with the rest of the band. It's not like some bang of metal on top of it. Their dynamics are beautiful. Wow. Little flute part here. Build. Man. Timpani or bass drum as well. Little off there. It and the hit with the bass drum or timpani with the rest of the Man, but seriously amazing full piece oh my gosh you just know those those musicians <laughs> like oh man i know i can't even talk it was so cool hello everybody so welcome back from the tape so mitchell has to go soon so we're gonna hand it off to him to talk about how he viewed jupiter so go on ahead all right so i'm gonna be completely real i really haven't heard this for a hot second like, I've only heard this, like, once or twice. So, listening to it again was pretty fun. Um, I really liked it. I mean, the brass and the woodwinds, they, they knew when to be loud, they knew when to be quiet. Um, they, they knew when to... They had a really technical... They had some really technical lines uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the overall, just the entire segment. 
Um, but they did that really well. I didn't really hear any flaws. There was a lot of double tongue in passages. Um, they really did. Um, they really did really well. So, I mean, overall, I enjoyed it. I might listen to the entire symphony or suite or whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it. Symphonic um, suite. Um, uh, otherwise, so on that note, let's pass it off. Okay, so I'll go, uh, Mitchell. If you if you want to leave now, you can. So. Uh, how I viewed it, uh, it's actually one of my top five favorite pieces. It's always been up there. I've always loved just like the planets in general and especially the Jupiter movement. It's just a, I love the slow part. The slow part of it is great. I just love the horn and the strings take over. It's such a full sound. And that's, if I, if I, if we talk about what stuck out to us the most, definitely that. And I just think overall that this ensemble, I don't know what, I don't know if you saw it in the description, Isaac, I don't think it tells us an ensemble that played that, but it was great. And Isaac, it was you that I went to go see it live, correct? We saw it live, right? Yeah, with the Florida Orchestra, was it the Florida? Yes, we did, yes. Florida Orchestra, yes. Yeah, it was such a great just symphony to listen to. Amazing. Him and I looked at each other as soon as Jupiter started, we're like, digga 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 dum dum it's just... Such a catchy oh, yeah. song, and it brings joy to me. So uh, you can go ahead and talk what you th- thought about it, Isaac. Yeah, so uh, one of my favorite parts of that um, particular movement in that suite is, or particular um, part of that movement, is the kind of transparency of the different parts. So mm-hmm. you go very uh, big, very kind of regal, fanfare type sound into this kind of playful, and then you go into this very stretched out, long, um, one feel kind of. And then after that, you go back to the playful section. And then you get this, like, in the last, like, I don't know, four or five bars, you get this very regal trumpet sound, brass sound. It's really, really cool. Uh-huh. Um, I love how much variety is in just that, like, eight minutes. Like, it's T- really, tons, really of, tons of layering. Um, tons of layering. Great layering. Yes. 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 Absolutely love what Gustav Holst did, it, uh, did in those parts. Um, Absolutely love the flute parts. Uh, I had a chance to kind of look at this um, a couple times, and going from playing piccolo and playing flute in this piece is really it's it's a challenge, but it's I mean it's something that I absolutely love. I mean, one of my favorite favorite movements in this feat is Jupiter, and it's just an amazing, really amazing. Piece. Okay, so before uh, Jalen and Owen talk about Mars, I want to say a fun fact about the planets. So apparently, like. Uh, I'm George Lucas or John Williams. I I keep I get those like the composer and like the director confused for Star Wars, but it was George Lucas who wrote John the music. Williams. John Williams. John Williams. So John Williams who wrote the music for Star Wars actually was inspired by this piece. This was I was told by our middle school director, Mr. Touchton. He was inspired by the planets to write like the main theme is that if you listen to Mars, you can hear like Star Wars stuff in there. So it's like, it's like he took stuff from that and inspired him to write that music. So if Owen wants to go first, he can go right on ahead. Yeah, I mean, um, I haven't like played. I haven't played Mars in an orchestra setting. I played it very a uh, very short segment of it. Just the build up with that triplet pattern um, going up to like the hit, um, like a very condensed version of the first. Um, couple segments of the piece um as a transition in a marching show and being on percussion for that it's a real challenge to be able to carry that same intensity um while being at that softer dynamic but then you finally get a chance to grow through it and you get to that full volume your full sound and it's just a really powerful moment like I mean, listening to it, it's just, you're just given so much sound built up from these minor progressions and um, these just like powerful low brass voicings giving you that melodic content. And that's just a great one. Like it's, it's just a really good composition. And when it's executed well, it's just phenomenal to hear. Uh, Jalen? Yeah, your views on Mars. Uh oh, she's having the mic issue again. Okay, so yeah, she's having the mic issue again. So Owen, what stuck out to you 
most about that piece so Jalen can relog? Um, I mean, obviously, um, in uh, in a suite like that, you usually have a focus on the strings for majority of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and something that I really appreciate, I haven't listened to the entirety of um, the planet suite. I've only listened to Jupiter and Mars. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really appreciate how Mars has a heavy focus on the the band section of the orchestra rather than just giving most of the content to the strings with the winds only there to back it up. Mm-hmm. So I really appreciated the heavy focus on um, on the winds, especially the heavy focus on the low brass as something that, a section that rarely will get the melody mm-hmm. um, in that orchestra setting. Having Giving those players the chance to be able to show off what they can do and really just not only just make music with the sheets that they're given, but tell a story with it instead of just supporting a story mm-hmm. is something that I really enjoy. Uh, Jupiter's the same way. It's very, like, brass heavy. So it has, like, a lot of the wind sound going on through it. So I'll hand it off to Jalen. Uh, Jalen, are you here? Yeah. There she is. You hear me? Yes, there we are. Yeah, it's so weird. Okay, anyways, um, one thing I noticed about uh, Mars and parts of Jupiter, because I accidentally started watching half of it and then I had to go... Uh, do Mars, <laughs> but <laughs> they use a lot of repetition, which I find really interesting because in literature, you're supposed to point out things like repetition are used to intensify something. So I think they really use that in the piece to I, it, <laughs> intensify it as well. And I really liked it and how full it was and how they used everything to their advantage. I, yeah, it's really cool. I almost commented about Star Wars, but I got mm. made fun of it. For, for another time I said something that would have been right this time but you would have been right this time wasn't it marching Monday like cause yeah. we record these out of order I think it was marching Monday it sounded like Star Wars <laughs> <laughs> well yeah like this piece overall like the symphonic suite is a great symphony just to listen to all the way through and all the movements are like called different things and I like I don't know What's it called, Jalen? Do you know Jupiter of what's that last word? I think it's um, to me it just means joy, but I don't know how to pronounce that. It's last joy. Word. Uh, Jolly, okay, that, yeah, that's what I thought. Jolly. So, yeah, just they all have a different name, like Mars, bringer of war. You can feel the war right. in there, and you know Star Wars. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, we'll we'll call it a day for that. So that was uh, Mars and Jupiter uh, in the symphonic suite of the planets by Gustav Holst and. Uh, Join us tomorrow for Marching Monday without Isaac for uh, Claudia Taylor Johnson. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun, fun. See you guys tomorrow.